Okay, let's press that. Hold it! Let me get this straight. You didn't know anything about the victim's letter? That's right. I believe I've said as much already. <clears throat> then how did you know? How did you know it was addressed to the storyteller? Oh, indeed. Ha <laughs> ha, caught out. Why don't you answer this question, witness? It's true this letter is addressed to the storyteller. But when did you find out about it? I have spoken about the murder with many people over the past three months. Uh-oh. Hang on! Excuse me, Miss Mailer. Oh! Oh, boy. I thought I caught her off guard, but it's her speech that caught me off guard. Is there perhaps anything you'd like to add to Miss Grail's testimony? Uh, uh, no, not really. If that's the case, let me ask you a different question. Did you tell Miss Grail about Sir Belduc's letter? Uh, I don't know. Do not beat around the bush, witness. Answer the question. If I may briefly interrupt. Oh, I am testifying right now. If you wish to question Miss Mailer, please do so once you've finished interrogating me. She's not going to let me question Mailer from the looks of it, and if she's so keen to prevent her from answering, this might be a cr critical point in the testimony. I've got to find another way of fishing for that information. Witnesses, continue testify. Ugh. Okay, uh... I guess press what she says now, right? Hold it! You, you became a courier because of Sir Belduke? That's right, I was uh, also, what would you call it, an orphan. I've been stealing bread or apples and such from stalls and shops to survive. I was known far and wide among the traders in the shopping area, and I was famous, or rather infamous. <clears throat> was she stealing from Mrs. Eclair, too? And one day Miss Grail took me there to Sir Belduke's residence, I mean. Sir Belduke helped me, he helped me to find a suitable job. And so you became a courier. Yes, see, I only had one real skill. I'm light-footed. At first, I didn't take it seriously, the job, I mean. I didn't care about work. But then I realized it. It's not so bad to be useful, you know, to other people. So, I owe him a lot, too, you see. Sir Belduke, I mean. Hmm, what a heartwarming story. I think the judge just wiped away a tear from the rim of his hood. The more you hear about Sir Belduke, the more obvious it will become that no one had any reason to want to kill him. It sure does seem that way. Oh, he told her about the confidentiality obligation. Let's press this. Hold it! The confidentiality obligation is a rule held among couriers, is that right? Yes, a courier must not disclose the contents of a letter, nor the names, nor addresses of its sender and recipient. But I'll tell you confidentially that um, I love gossiping, bad-mouthing people especially, so I wasn't confident I could keep it. The confidentiality obligation, I mean. I was tempted to talk about this and that. To think that Belduc trusted her. But then Sir Belduc spoke to me. He told me this. Think about how you'd feel that, feel that person's place. And that got me thinking I really, really like to gossip. But when it comes to being gossiped about, people's messages are their secrets, and secrets must be kept. <clears throat> Indeed, no one would want their letters to be publicly known. She's certainly undetermined when it comes to confidentiality. That's why she doesn't want to disclose the address of Belduc's letter. I'm not going to get it out of her. I promise, Sir Belduc, and I'm going to keep it no matter what. The promise, I mean. It's something I can pride myself on, right? Grail may not have had a motive to murder Belduc, but what if she used the portal to obtain that letter? Depending on the contents of the letter, I might be able to prove there had been her motive. I wonder what Sir Belduc wrote in about that letter. There's only one way to find out. I need to get Grail to admit that she got hold of the letter. I'm worried, Mr. Wright, of what's lying ahead. The feeling's mutual, but I have to see it through. I've got to pursue the truth. Alright, we're gonna do this again. Took her in. I had no reason to take life or steal the, the, his letter to the storyteller. Belly was a wonderful man, and he's the one who told me about it, the confidentiality agreement. 
All right, I gotta keep going. I know what I gotta do. Cause remember, I went over to the to the mailer, so I have to push it about the storyteller, but not go to the mailer. Okay. Here we go. Hold it. And like, how did you know it was to the storyteller? Yep. Go through this again. There you go, so let's skip that. Everyone has been very kind to me. They have also told me of all sorts of things. I must have heard about it from someone at some point. Hmm. Well, the incident was certainly much talked about. Would you not agree, Defense? Does our testimony hold together? There's a contradiction! There's a huge contradiction in Ms. Grail's testimony. You're becoming very predictable, Sir Blue Knight. Ha! Ah! So there's a contradiction. I hope you have the evidence to prove it. Here's my chance. There's only one way to expose the contradiction. Ah, oh, fuck. What do I do here? I present evidence. What do I present? I'll present! The defense is ready to present evidence. Very well, the defense shall present evidence of a different nature. What does the defense believe to contradict Ms. Grail's testimony? I think it's the tomato juice. <clears throat> I think it's the tomato juice and follow my line of reasoning. Okay, I think I'm going to use a hint before I do it. Because I'm curious. I think I am going to use a hint because I only have three chances left here. But here's what I'm thinking, right? Oh, wait. I can't do a hint, can I? Nope. Oh, well, then I guess I'm just going to do it. Here's what I'm thinking. Oh, uh, what's his name? Emir drank from the tomato juice and he got knocked out. Okay. So, what that means is that she had the tomato juice. She drugged it. She brought the alchemist the drug tomato juice, so she had a reason to read the letter. She had a reason. We don't know what it is, but we know the tomato juice was involved, and she gave him the drug tomato juice. So, I think that's what it's gotta be. I can't imagine what the hell else it could possibly be. Seriously. I'm gonna double check this. I don't think this is it. I'm not seeing any evidence here. I can't go to any menu. No, I can't. They won't let me go to any menu. It's too late now. It's too late. I have to present evidence. I'm going to present it. Take that! Music's still playing, which means it's wrong. And, of course, they're gonna say it's wrong. Yeah, it's not right. And we skipped through all this bullshit. God damn it. I better save. Ah! Luke just said contradictions can be exposed without the need for evidence. The professor said something to this effect when Espella was on trial. Huh? Now that I think about it... <laughs> the professor did talk about a different kind of weapon I could use in court. Logic! Maybe I should try to keep that in mind when I give it another try. <clears throat> Alright. Fuck. Go back. Let's save. Okay, push again. Hold 
All right, blah, blah, blah. Witness. Nope, keep going. Contradiction. Okay, here we go. 